Hello everyone and welcome to this presentation about indicator lifecycle management, methodology and practical usage with MIFP. So today we are going to discuss how trust, data quality and freshness can be used to prioritize IOCs, also methodology with models to score IOCs and uh, implementation in fact of indicator lifecycle management in MISP. So now we are quickly going to see why and how you should explore your IOCs. So you probably all know that sharing information about threats is crucial, especially in the cybersecurity sector. Um, something that we noticed is that organizations are sharing more and more, uh, fortunately. If you look at uh, the graph that is below, uh, it shows the cumulative contribution by unique organization. Uh, where the information they share was meant to be propagated. So these numbers are coming from one of our instances for the private sector. Uh, you could have other scenarios happening depending on your community, but we noticed that we have this uh, on our instance. So you can see year over year uh, organizations are sharing more and more and more and more organizations are sharing. So one of the one of the biggest problems that you have when you are in an environment where everyone is sharing is that you have to, to deal with data created by multiple parties. So you have issues with trust because sometimes you don't know uh, who shared and who created the data. Also data quality, not everyone produces the same quality of data. And the relevance issue, by relevance it depends uh, what, what are you supposed to do with the data. Uh, do you want only actionable data or do you want uh, to do some research over it. So it's kind of linked to the use case and interest. And these two can be conflicting. So as I said, if you want to do operational security, you just want IOC to be blocked, uh, you don't have the same use case as someone that wants to do attribution and research about specific threats. So one way to kind of tackle this issue is to use what we call taxonomies. And we are going to see that in more depth in a few slides. But uh, it basically just label uh, that you can attach to data and it can describe what you want to do with them uh, and how to do it. So the second problem is that these IOCs can be shared in large quantities. And due to that, we only have partial information about the freshness and partial information about the validity uh, of this data. And to tackle this issue, we use something that we call sightings uh, in MISP. Uh, and also we are going to see how and, and how it is used uh, in, in the platform. But the, the main idea of uh, this presentation about the Deakin model that we are going to present is that uh, it combines both this taxonomies and the sighting to, to provide uh, indicator lifecycle management. So let's take a deep dive into sightings. So what is it? So sightings are the temporal context to indicators. So it can be used to represent detection or activity of a specific uh, IOC. So for example, if you have an IP address uh, and you notice that it has some activity or your SIM detect that it was tried to be accessed, uh, you can represent this uh, by adding a sighting to this IP address. And so in the end, it gives us credibility and visibility to the indicator, so if it is used or not, or if it has been detected or not. Uh, one cool use case of this is that you can create a continuous feedback loop between your trade information sharing platform and your intrusion detection uh, software, uh, where you will, the intrusion detection will take its inputs, its data input from the trade, uh, trade information sharing, and, and then report back detections back to the, uh, in that case, to, to, to MISP. And so with that, you can prioritize uh, active IOCs and decays old ones that are not used. So now back to the taxonomies. So taxonomies are set, our set of common libraries to express the same vocabularies. And it's a simple way to attach classification to data. So here are a few uh, examples of such taxonomies, so admiralty scales, economic impact, 
estimative language, TLP that you probably know. Um, something that is important uh, in that context is that the classification must be uh, used globally and to be efficient. So nearly everyone, or the, the best would be that everyone use the same taxonomies to describe the same thing. Otherwise, if everyone just use different taxonomy or different tags, you, you can't do anything with it because you may not understand what the other parties are sharing. So this is an example of the Admiralty Scale Taxonomy. Uh, you can see that we have multiple tags, so you can uh, give information about uh, information credibility, you can give information about source reliability. Uh, this is just an example and we'll, we'll see how we can leverage these uh, taxonomies to, to, to well, ranked and score attributes and IOCs. So you've probably noticed that some taxonomies and in particular the Admiralty scale have a numerical value attached to the tax. Uh, and this allows us to uh, use this concept in mathematical expression. Uh, so if you look at the Admiralty scale taxonomy, we have defined these mappings. So for example, usually reliable has a numerical value of 75, uh, unreliable have a numerical value of zero. Same for the uh, credibility. Uh, so if it's uh, probably true, possibly true, and, and so on, we have we have mapped this uh, concept to numerical value. And with that, we can use these tags and taxonomies uh, in mathematical expression. Something that uh, can be debated is how the mapping is done. So for example, for the reliability, uh, we've mapped deliberately deceptive to zero and reliability cannot be judged to 50. So this is something that you can debate and that you may not agree with uh, the mapping we did. Uh, uh, but in the end, everyone should be able to override this value. So in the uh, MISP implementation, uh, you have the possibility to set your own value if you do not agree with the default one. So this is a very high level formula on our solution on how to uh, decay and score IOCs uh, so to score IOCs, we take two components into account. The first one is the base score, uh, which is the initial score of the IOC, only considering the context of this IOC. So for example, the type, is it an IP address? Is it a file? Uh, is it a hash? And, and so on. Uh, but also all the tags uh, and taxonomies attached to this IOC. And the second component is the decay, uh, which is basically a function composed of a lifetime and a decay speed. And this function just decreases the, the base score over time, so reduces its value. And so with that, we can score IOCs. So this is how it looks graphically. So on the y-axis, you have the score of an IOC, and on the x-axis, you have the time. And so you, the, the curve shows the score over time. So at the beginning, you can see that so when the time is, uh, let's say, at zero, uh, the score is equal to the base score. And then over time, uh, the, this score will be decreased uh, depending on how the decay uh, express this, uh, this de decay speed. So let's see how it is implemented in MISP. Uh, it can be, th this, uh, uh, this model uh, can be implemented in every software, but as MISP already contain uh, uh, full-blown implementation of it, it's much easier and visually pleasant to, to use it. So if you are familiar with MISP, uh, you may recognize this interface, but for those who are not familiar, it just shows uh, a table here composed of IOCs. And on the top right, you have a score column uh, that gives the score of all of these IOCs based on the different model applied. So for the first row, for example, for the IP address 5.5.5.5, .5 .5 .5, you have two models, uh, 
the first model is an idea simple decaying model, uh, which gave a value of 65. And the second model is model called model 5 and gave a value close to uh, 80. So by looking at this, you can see that this IP address has not been decayed at the time this, this screenshot was uh, taken. But if you look at the last uh, row with the IP address 6.6.6.6, .6 .6 .6, um, you have again these two models, but uh, the score is too low. And so it is marked as decay indicated by the uh, red highlight of the, of the score. So it does not really make sense to only have this score and decay uh, exposed to a web interface. It's much more uh, convenient and usable to have it exposed in the API too. So again, if you are familiar with the MISP API, you, you will directly notice what's new. But for those who are not familiar, when you are searching for data, uh, it will be returned. So the, the, the particular uh, IOC in that case is uh, an IP source of the value a .a 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 .a. And if you request the decay information, you will get back uh, a new key called decay score, and it will contain the, the uh, dynamically computed score of this attribute at the current time. And it will give you uh, a flag, meaning if this IOC should be marked as decayed or not, depending on the model used. And in that case, it was the model an idea simple decaying model. So when the implement, uh, implementation in MIS was done, uh, it had this objective. And I think everyone that would like to implement this in, in the system should uh, stick to, to this point. So to provide automatic scoring based on default value, because you, for user it may be a bit complicated to understand how the models work and so on. So it should provide automatic scoring by default. Also on the fly computation, so do not store the, the data, uh, well, the score in the database, because this score uh, vary over time and it should not touch the data either. So the only way to do it properly uh, and cleanly is to provide an overlay without touching the data. Uh, and this overlay would contain the score of the IOC uh, computed at the time of the request. Also, it should provide, but that's also uh, optional, a user-friendly UI to set uh, different model configurations. So for example, to set uh, the, the lifetime or the decay speed of the different model, it should be user-friendly to do it. Also provide simulation tools on the live data so that users that are creating their own models uh, can experience it and view uh, its effect on live data. Th this, this point is probably the most important is interaction through the API because uh, having such tool in a web interface is nice, but it's not really useful if you don't expose it in the API. And last but not least, the opportunity uh, for users to create their own formula or, or algorithm because everyone do not uh, always agree with what you are uh, expressing and how you want to compute stuff. So if you can provide them a way to describe how the for formula on what algorithm to use, uh, it's always better. So in MISP, we called model and well, they are basically instantiation of a formula with configurable parameters. So we've talked a bit about it. So you have the lifetime, which consists in how long an IOC should be kept in a system. You have also the decay rate, so how fast an IOC should lose its score over time. Uh, an optional threshold, allowing you to uh, discard an IOC sooner than when the score reaches zero. And a default base score, if you don't have any taxonomies or tags attached to an IOC, you want to provide a fallback value. And then you also have mapping parameters, so how the base score should be computed. So uh, which taxonomy should get priority when you are computing the base score. Uh, also a way to uh, map the type of the IOC with the model. So this is extremely important because an IP address uh, should be decayed most probably faster than the file hash because an IP address can change over time while a file hash 
well, it will not change. So if you have a, f um, a hash of a malware, it will probably stay the same for a very long period of time. So that's why models should behave differently depending on the type of the IOC you are considering. Uh, and the last one is the formula or algorithm used by the different model. So this is what you have in the interface uh, in MISP for all the models. So you can load multiple models at once and depending on your configuration, you can ask uh, an IOC to, to have its, its uh, score computed against one model uh, or multiple models at the same time. So this is the user-friendly configuration interface to design your own model and to perform mapping. So we can see that we have uh, the possibility to set the different parameters like the lifetime, uh, the decay speed, and the threshold. And you have this nice graph showing you uh, the, the result of these parameters. So if you were to uh, touch the, the lifetime, for example, the number of days here would increase. Same if you touch the decay speed, you may have uh, uh, a steeper curve on it. Same for the threshold. Um, and on the left, you have a table showing the mapping uh, uh, on which, uh, uh, of which attribute type should be considered and applied to this model. So this is the base core uh, configuration tool. So to go quickly over it, uh, to compute a base score, uh, you may want to, to wait and to, well, to apply weight on the different taxonomies if they are applied to one, one IOC. So for example, you may want to prioritize, uh, let's say, uh, confidence uh, or likelihood probability uh, on an IOC uh, and also uh, um, okay, cut. So this is the, the base core uh, configuration tools. It allows you to map the different weight on the taxonomies that you want to be taken into account when you are computing the initial base core of the IOC. So the idea is just uh, to allow you to really uh, specify what taxonomies uh, have precedence over uh, another. So for example, in that case, you have the priority level taxonomy which should take close to 50% of the, the base core computation and the other two uh, should, well, uh, share what's remaining. So now the simulation tool, uh, well, it, it provides an interface uh, to show the decay of different models on an IOC, uh, on IOC's uh, store in, in your system. So this is a nice example where you can see that when the IOC was created, it had uh, a base score of 80 and then it loses this value over time. Uh, and in August, it received the new sightings, resetting the base score and so on and so forth. And at the current state, when this decision was taken, um, the, the, the IOC had a, a value of uh, uh, 54, making it not decayed, as you can see. So for those who know MIPS, this is how you configure and how you ask decay model to be applied on your data. So we just pass include decay score to one to ask the system to include uh, the decay information. We can also pass uh, exclude decay flag, meaning that if this flag is set, it will uh, filter out all attributes and all IOCs that, uh, that have been marked as decay by the different models. And you can also provide uh, what, what model should be applied to, to your search uh, and also you can change the model configuration on the fly if you wish, but it's uh, totally optional. So this one is uh, a bit uh, gadget, uh, but the idea is to let users uh, create their own formula uh, and our own algorithm. 
to, to the system. So if they want to add like a query against a reputation service to alter the base score, or if they want to add uh, like a different formula to compute uh, the actual score, you can do it uh, uh, in, uh, in this kind of file. This is just a template. But this sh really shows you how easy it is to create a, a new DK algorithm. So you just have to implement two functions, the compute base score, which receives the model, the attribute, the base score, and the elapsed time since the last sighting. And this uh, algorithm should return a numerical score. And the second function to implement is the isDecade that should return just a boolean uh, uh, representing if the IOC should be expired or not. And that's basically it. So for anyone having a bit of PHP background, uh, it's fairly easy to, to do it. You could even do the whole algorithm in Python and then call it from the PHP file. That works too. So to conclude, uh, information uh, May, share, uh, may transit through uh, a couple of connected instances. Uh, and this raises issue about trust and validity, where it plays a big role in how the data should be used in your, in your platform. Uh, a methodology to score IOCs was presented, uh, uh, as well as its uh, implementation in the MISP open source software. So we presented one strategy with, uh, with base score and citing, resetting the, the score to the base score. Uh, but these are also other strategies that are currently under review. So the improved support of sightings. Uh, so in MISP, you have the positive sightings and the false positive sightings. Uh, somehow, false positive sightings should be taken into account and reduce the score. This is not the case right now, but it would be nice to have it. Uh, another strategy uh, or algorithm would be to uh, uh, prioritize citing surges instead of a sporadic one. So the idea is to, instead of resetting the score to the base score when you receive a citing, uh, the score should be uh, increased additively based on the number of uh, citing you receive in the, current, in the, in the time span. Um, also include correlation uh, between IOCs uh, in the scoring, so just to take into account the correlation and give a higher score for high correlating uh, IOCs, for example. And the last one, which is also interesting, is uh, more mean less, uh, saying that if an IOC has way too much sightings, it's probably a false positive and it should be marked as decay. So these are just IDs. Uh, that would be nice to have uh, uh, in MISP so that the model, the default model could support this. If you have any other ideas, please feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, this is a fairly new project, so we're really happy to get feedback about it. So I hope you liked it, the presentation, and thanks 